Hi, and welcome back to RPG Gamer's Top 5, and this time we'd like to count down the 5 best episodes of the Star Wars Clone Wars series. Over on the site, as part of our Star Wars reviews, we watched and rated every single episode, and these are the ones that come out as the 5 highest scoring episodes. And with a little bit of a refresher, we've sorted them into order. Now obviously, this is just our opinion, and equally obviously, there's going to be spoilers throughout, so it's time to quit if you haven't watched the series. But anyway, let's get on with the countdown. And number 5, the 13th episode of Season 4, Escape from Cadavo. With the heroes captured by Zargerian slavers and forced into obedience or to watch innocents suffer for their actions, this episode erupts with not only an Anakin vs Dooku fight, with Anakin using a whip instead of his usual saber, but we also get a prison escape with Obi-Wan and Rex, all capped off with Rex executing the slave master when he taunts that Obi-Wan won't kill him in cold blood because Rex is a soldier, and killing is what he does. Number 4, Season 3, Episode 9, Hunt for Zero. With the Jedi heroes searching for Zero the Hut, this seems like a fairly standard episode of Clone Wars, but what makes it stand out from the crowd is the characterization. We've got the disgusting portrayal of Zero's mother, a surfer dude version of Quinn Man Voss, but the breakout one is the fact that they took Sai Snootles, famous only for being Jabba's singer in Return of the Jedi, and turned her into a devious backstabber. Add in some action with Cad Bane, some stomach-turning kissing between Zero and Sai Snootles, and you've got a great episode. And at number 3, Season 4, Episode 10, Carnage of Krell. Set on Umbara, a world of misty swamps and sleek technology, this episode is a visual feast, with battles raging through the mist, blaster bolts and lightsabers glowing away through, and some amazing design work from the animators. The story reveals that the clone troopers have been betrayed by their own general, and must bring him into justice. A four-armed Jedi wielding two double-bladed lightsabers, yep, he wields double-double lightsabers, he's like nothing we've seen before in series or movie. Clone Trooper episodes are usually pretty good, but this one shows off how well Clone Wars manages to deal with dozens of identical characters, each with their own personality. Number 2, Season 5, Episode 16, The Lawless. Clone Wars introduced us to the more human side of Obi-Wan Kenobi, showing us the woman he would have given everything up for, and showing it wasn't him that had the strength to end it, but her, devoting her life to the world of Mandalore. This episode comes at the end of the storyline where Darth Maul has returned from death and has seized control of Mandalore, all to lure Obi-Wan in and destroy him by killing his beloved in front of him. And then the action gets started. With Obi-Wan defeated and locked in the jail, in abject misery, Maul's reign of terror is brought to an end by none other than Darth Sidious himself, Palpatine. Not willing to suffer the idea that Maul may one day challenge him or upset his carefully laid plans to control the galaxy, Palpatine arrives on Mandalore to fight Maul and his brother, breaking the mighty warrior and slaying his brother before taking him away into captivity for later plans. The ending comes out of nowhere and is breathtaking to behold, especially after the emotional roller coaster we've just been through with Obi-Wan. And finally, at number one in our best episodes of Clone Wars, Season 5, Episode 19, To Catch a Dead Eye. Ahsoka Tano was the emotional heart of Clone Wars. While Obi-Wan and Anakin were somewhat distant figures, Ahsoka carried her emotions on her sleeve, growing from a slightly annoying character to one now beloved by the Star Wars fanbase. This story sees her framed and hunted through the underworld of Coruscant, her only friend the once Sith assassin Asajj Ventress, showing us the parts of the city planet we've never seen and providing parallels between Asajj and Ahsoka, both once committed to their causes and now betrayed by their masters, the two are unlikely but perfectly suited allies. While this isn't the final part of this storyline for Ahsoka, it is the highlight, and while Clone Wars had many episodes after this one, it always felt like the series was Ahsoka's tale, and this story was the end to that tale. A brilliant final story for our favourite Clone Wars character, which is why this was our number one Clone Wars episode. As always, many thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like what we're doing. And above all, you look after yourselves. Catch you later. Bye.